Hello everyone and welcome to my home office. Due to the coronavirus measures, I'm recording this tutorial here. What I would like to share with you today is how to evaluate informative hypotheses using the Bain R package, of which I was one of the developers. This is both a general tutorial to Bain and a specific demonstration of the new functionality for structural equation models estimated in Lavan, which we added in the latest update. If you need to install R before completing this tutorial, I would recommend following my other tutorial, which was bundled with my works R package, which really clearly explains how to install R and RStudio onto your system. For this example, we'll be looking at data based on the theory of reasoned action. It's a popular theory in psychology developed quite a long time ago by Eisen and Fishbein. The theory states that behavior is predicted by behavioral intention, which in turn is predicted by attitudes towards the behavior and the subjective norm about the behavior. What we're looking at today is a synthetic data set based on real results found by Reinecke, and the behavior they investigated is condom use amongst 16 to 24 year old adolescents. The dependent variable condom use is measured on a five point Likert type scale, which we will treat as a continuous variable, and the behavioral intention is also measured on a five point Likert type scale, which we will simil similarly treat as continuous. There are three attitude items about condom use and three normative items about condom use. All of these items are also measured on five point Likert type scales. So the data were provided in SPSS format and we're going to read them into R. So first for this example, I will clear my environment. So we start with a completely blank slate. And then I will load the library foreign, which contains functions to read data from SPSS. So this row of syntax, this command, uh, asks SPSS to read, uh, sorry, asks R to read the SPSS file into an object called DF, short for data frame. In other words, I'm creating a new object which contains the contents of toradata.sav, an SPSS data file. When I execute this line of code, we will see that there's a new object created in the environment, which is called df as specified, and it contains 250 observations of 13 variables. If we expand the object, we can see, for example, here there's a respondent number and the three attitude items that I promised you the file would contain, etc., etc. Okay, so let's collapse it again and let's move on. Let's specify the model. As I mentioned before, we have three indicators for attitudes and norms, and we have observed variables for intention and behavior. Therefore, I would suggest that we create a measurement model for the two latent variables, attitude and norm. Then we will specify a structural model based on the theory of recent actions in which attitude and norms both predict behavioral intention and behavior. So let's do this. We load the library Lavan, which can be used to estimate structural equation models. It's free open source software, quite advanced and very easy to use. Then we specify the model syntax, which I've highlighted now. It's just a text string at this point. I'm only describing in text what the model should look like. The first row says that I want to create a latent variable called added, which is defined by the three attitude items. Second line of code similarly says that I want to define a latent variable called norm, which is defined by one, two, and three norm items. Next follows the structural part of the model. The first row is a regression equation, which says that the variable intent should be predicted by attitude and norm. And the next row is also a multiple regression, which specifies that behavior should be predicted by intent and attitude and norm. You already see the causal chain being built up, right? Because intent is dependent on attitude and norm, but then behavior is also dependent on intent. All right. So this concludes the syntax for the measurement and structural part of the model. Next, we estimate this model. So I have to execute all of this code. You will notice that when I load the library Lavan and run this code that I have a new object in my environment which just contains the model. Then I will estimate the model using the SEM function in the Lavan package and put the results inside of an object called fit. I run this and you will see I have a new object in my environment called fit and it's a Lavan object. 
Just for good practice, let's examine the model fit with the command fit measures, and I will ask for some common fit measures. And what we see is that the RMSEA is quite low for this model, the CFI and the TLI are high, and the SRMR is also low. In other words, we have a well-specified, or at least well-fitting, model. Next, let's examine the model results to get some feeling for uh, what the outcomes are. I would like to use my own package TidySim, which is designed for estimating, uh, tabulating, and plotting the results of structural equation models. So first I load the library, then I specify a layout for a plot, and I can just make this really simple kind of matrix which places the different variables in space. So like this, and then I use the command graph sem to get a plot. So here is the plot. The plot looks like the uh, layout that I specified. And we see here that indeed intent has a significant effect on behavior. Uh, attitude and norms have significant effects on intent. So roughly speaking, the model is in line with the predictions of Torah theory. Furthermore, let's see which parameters are available in this model for Bain to specify hypotheses about. And to do this, I use a function from the Bain package called getEstimates. And because this is a structural equation model which contains both standardized and unstandardized parameters, I have to be explicit about which parameters I want to use. And for this example, I'm going to use the standardized parameters. So I run this command and it shows me that these are the named parameters inside of the object called fit that I can specify hypotheses about. Now what I'm interested in are the structural coefficients, in other words, the regression effects. So let's specify informative hypotheses about those. The Torah model precludes direct paths between attitude and norms and actual behavior. Torah states that this effect should be mediated completely by behavioral intentions. In other words, Torah predicts that the effect of attitude and norms on behavior should be equal to zero. We could call this the strict version of Torah. But we can also specify a competing hypothesis that says, well, maybe these effects are not exactly zero. Maybe they are still present or even bigger than zero. So let's specify two competing hypotheses, one representing the strict version of Torah and one that also includes direct effects from attitudes and norms on behavior. So now I load the package Bain to evaluate these hypotheses. And then I'm going to use the function Bain. If I select it and press F1, I can see the help file that uh, explains how to use it in the bottom right corner here but I already know how to use it, so I'm just going to show you how I use it. Here I've written my hypotheses in text, and notice that I can refer to parameters from the Lavan model by name. So what does the hypothesis here say? This hypothesis says, open parentheses, three coefficients, specifically the effect of intent on behavior, the effect of attitude on intention, and the effect of norm on intent are all bigger than zero. These are the predictions of Torah theory. And also, direct effects of attitudes and norms on behavior should be equal to zero. So this first hypothesis represents a strict version of Torah theory. Now I present a second hypothesis, delineated by a semicolon, which also says, yes, these three effects, intention on behavior, attitude on intention, and normal intention, these are indeed all bigger than zero, but also the direct effects of attitudes and norms on behavior are also bigger than zero. So this is the more flexible version of Torah theory. All right, enough explanation, let me evaluate the code. And now we get our results below. We see that this is a Bayesian informative hypothesis test for an object of class Lavan. And we see that there's a hypothesis one, hypothesis two, and a HU, which is the unconstrained hypothesis. It's included as kind of a fail safe in case all of your defined hypotheses uh, fit the data poorly. Below, we see some legend for this table. Uh, we see the hypotheses fully spelled out as I specified them. And we see a note. This note says, 
BFU denotes the base factor for the hypothesis at hand versus the unconstrained hypothesis, HU, and BFC denotes the base factor of the hypothesis at hand versus its complement. So, in case you haven't read the paper, let me refresh your knowledge. BFU means how much evidence is there in favor of the hypothesis versus any state of parameter values. And BFC, the base factor against the complement, says how much evidence is there in favor of the hypothesis rather than against the hypothesis. So if we look in the table, we see that um, both BFU values are reasonably large, the second one substantially larger than the other one. So there is some support for both of these hypotheses versus the unconstrained. And if we look at the BFC, we see that there is also substantial evidence, particularly for the second hypothesis, that the hypothesis is true versus that the hypothesis is not true. But more interestingly, perhaps, is that we can examine the PMPBs. These are the posterior model probabilities, and they tell us, out of this selection of hypotheses, how much evidence is there for each of them. So this allows us to compare more than one or more than two hypotheses. We have a full 100% posterior probability, which is distributed amongst the models. And in this case, we see that hypothesis two gets almost 94% of the posterior model probability. In other words, out of this selection of models, plus the unconstrained hypothesis, hypothesis two is really by far the most likely. So that gives us a lot of evidence in favor of a loose version of Torah theory and against the strict version of Torah theory. So this concludes my short demonstration. Um, I hope that you can find ways to apply Bayesian evaluation of informative hypotheses to your own research. Thank you very much and see you next time.